Hi everybody, Samantha Taylor here from Taylor Stamped for Scrapbooking Store. Um, just popped on, if anyone's joining me or sees me, give me some hearts. Um, say hello, let me know you're here. We're a little bit early, so I will just give it a few minutes for other people to hop on. Oh, I see a couple ladies. Hi, Cassandra. Hi, Marcy. Um, let me know if my screen is facing the right way, <laughs> too, guys. Last time I did this, my screen on my phone was showing one way, but it was showing a different way for you guys. So I want to make sure Facebook isn't acting up for me tonight. Um, I'm Samantha from Taylor Stamped. Samantha Taylor um, from Taylor Stamped. And um, I'm here tonight with a layout just to show you how I'm putting something together for Scrapbooking Store with the August kit. Hi, Maria. I am going to try and keep an eye on the comments as best as possible. If you guys have um, questions, I will try to keep an eye on that. Um, the way I have this set up, my phone is slightly taller than me, so I can uh, see everything going on um, uh, here. So I got to get up my tippy toes a little bit. So as I'm putting things together, I might miss, but I am going to try to keep an eye on them and answer your questions. Um, I know some of the moderators here um, will also help keep an eye on it for me as well. Oh good, thanks for letting me know I'm showing the right <laughs> way. All right, so before we jump in here, um, I will get going just a little bit for those of you that are here on time. If you get in later, you can always watch the replay of this. I have um, a sketch today. So for those of you that saw it ahead of time, there is a link to download the sketch. I created it specifically for this tonight. So it is a free one of a kind sketch for you guys. I know the ladies will stick this in the um, comments below. That's the word I was looking for. Comments below for you guys if you need it as well. If you haven't picked it up yet, pick it up after, um, whatever you like. I love sketches because there are so many ways to use them, especially with a kit club like this. You can use the same sketch next year and it, or next next year. How about next month? And it'll look completely different with a completely different set of papers. You can also turn it. So if your photos are laying a different direction than mine, um, as you're going through this, the photos you go, oh, I'd like to use with that. Just turn it a little bit and you've got the same thing going on here. Um, that'll that'll work really well for you. All right, so what you're gonna need then is the sketch. I'm gonna move this out of the way for now, but we will be referencing this. I'll see if I can leave it there without making too much of a mess. Um, I always, always, always have a ruler. I use my ruler a lot. My paper trimmer is off to the side. I did a little bit of cutting ahead of time, plus I'm using some bits and pieces. This will be, I think, my third layout with this kit, and I'm going pretty pattern paper heavy with this kit because I just really like the mixing of the patterns. I've got a couple of different adhesives. Uh, fair warning, I also design for glue dots, so that's why I use their products, but I also really love them. But that's my disclaimer there. I've got some pop-up glue dots, which are a dimensional adhesive. You can use a foam dimensional adhesive as well, but I really love these. Um, I've just got my tape runner, and then I also have a craft glue. We might be using the buttons tonight. I have an idea. I don't know if it's going to work. So I've got buttons from the add-on kit, um, and then I also have the alphas from the add-on kit. And then I have some papers. Now the only things not from the main kit besides my adhesives tonight are um, a journaling tag that I've got. There are definitely ones in this kit you could, could use for this. It just wasn't quite right for me, so I do have this one separately. And then um, your photos obviously aren't going to be part of the kit. And I do have one piece of cardstock I'm using, but I'm going to give you guys some options for going without it. All right, so let's get started. Um, the way I trimmed this out, this dark is actually our outside. Now, if you wanted to with this layout, depending on how much paper you like to use, you could just use a piece of pattern paper where I've got these polka dots and just skip this, this layout. I felt, or that layer of the layout, I felt like I needed this to be a little bit more grounded. And so I wanted, because of the busyness of the pattern paper, I wanted it to be a little bit more grounded. I tried a few different papers behind there and I just didn't like, it just felt like too much going on, especially because my photos, if you'll see my photos, they're black and orange and they don't have a lot of these colors in them and it just, it needed something to ground it. 
if you don't have pat, um, construction paper, construction, how about craft cardstock, or if you want to use um, your pattern papers up a little bit more, I think this is a good option for it too, but it just wasn't quite right for the way I was blending things. So this is that pattern. Um, the other side of it is the picnic baskets, but that's an, a good option for you as well. So I'm going to get putting down. Um, if it's not showing up great on here, this is actually a very dark navy blue cardstock here. It is, um, I believe, from We Are Memory Keepers, um, possibly American Crafts. Um, so that is where that came from, but it's just your standard 12 by 12 cardstock. So I cut a quarter inch off from both sides. Um, one horizontally, one vertically, which gives me then an eighth inch border all the way around the side. Kind of like you would if you're a card maker as well. Just layering it up. You can make this border bigger or smaller depending on what you like the look of. Now, I just happen to have a strip of this that's about six inches wide from another layout I did. And I am going to use this as my middle piece here. Now you can see I did the same thing here and I have it um, stripes down the side. There are two ways you can layer this up to make this work. If you've got a piece of paper that's bigger than this and you want to layer it over the top, you could cut this about six inches wide and the other one five and three quarters or you could go six and a quarter and five. That is one way to do it to layer it up. The way I'm going to do it instead, let me get this one put down and ah, I'm going to do this a little bit different. What I'm going to do instead is use this small strip. Now I wanted to show you, it came off of this piece of paper. Obviously I've used a big chunk of it. The back side is the pinwheels. The front side is a number of just strips all the way down. So this is one of the strips off of there. In case you're looking through your paper and going, I don't have that paper. Um, you do, you just didn't realize it. I am going to get that trim. That's one of the ones we didn't trim ahead of time. Now I'm not gonna be really exact with trimming this one. Um, but it's a thin one, so my trimmer isn't loving trimming straight on this one. All right. The size of this one isn't going to exactly matter. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to put my adhesive down the back side. And when you're doing this, you won't do it with a camera in your way, and you won't be um, kind of doing it with people watching you. So yours will be prettier than mine, probably but I want about that much of it peeking out. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So if you don't wanna use, I have a little adhesive sticking out there. If you guys don't wanna use an entire six, six and a quarter inch strip of paper behind it, you can conserve your paper a little bit more or if the paper you like, like I had, isn't wide enough to fit behind the whole thing, you can do it that way to keep it, um, to still be able to use that piece of paper. So it just needs to be 12 inches long. I eyeballed this. My best guess is that that's probably about a quarter inch on either side. Yeah, it's just slightly over a quarter inch. So now the reason um, I have a lay, uh, ruler a lot is if you lay your stuff out and you're not exactly sure how wide you want this piece of paper. Now I'm saying it can be six inches, it can be five and three quarters. You could do seven inches depending on how you want it to look. Um, the sketch is just sort of, I don't ever put numbers on my sketches because you guys, for measurements, because you can kind of make it work for what you've got, what your photo sizes are. But sometimes as I'm doing this, I like to go, mm, I think I want it about this wide and I'll, put my hands down and figure out where I want it or lay the piece of paper down and go, oh yeah, that looks about right. And then I'll go back and measure about how wide that is to give me an idea of what looks right to me as opposed to um, getting stuck to an exact measurement, if that makes sense. All right, we're flying through this. It's not that hard to put together a layout once you've got a sketch and once you've got your papers picked out. Now, these papers are a bit busier and I love mixing and matching pattern papers. If mixing and matching pattern papers isn't your thing, it will take a little bit longer to put all this together because sometimes you just have to pile papers on top of each other to figure out what looks right. And I did a bunch of that ahead of time so you guys didn't have to watch me do that. Um, 
I just did a little bit of what do I like on top of this and what do I like behind it. All right. Any questions so far? I'll take a breath and move on. Now we're going to do this three across the center. And I slid all my stuff out of the way and now I've got to find them again. <laughs> all right. I print my photos at home. Um, I think I've mentioned this before if you've tuned into me doing one before. I print my photos at home. I've got a nice photo printer. I like to sometimes work with a smaller photo. I feel like I can add a few more embellishments, a little more touches when I have sort of a medium sized medium sized photo on there. This is actually a four by six photo that um, my photo program lets me make a collage for lack of a better and split them right down the middle. So this is two um, three by four, three by four inch photos. There we go. So I just printed out like this, but then I cut them down the middle. Sometimes I like to tell it to put a bit of a border on there, which is something else I can do on there. And it's my favorite cheat for not having to put cardstock behind it. If you're printing your photos somewhere else, or you're not familiar with photo editing software, or don't like to have to make a collage at a time, and you're just printing photos, then just trim them down and put your own paper border behind it if you like that. You can also leave it out. I showed it here on the sketch, but you can absolutely leave it out as well. So I've got two three by four photos and then a three by four journaling card. And I journaled already just so you guys wouldn't have to watch me do it. If your photo doesn't need any journaling, I end up like that a lot of the time. You can use one of these in there. This didn't feel quite right with me to the pinwheels. Otherwise I could have just used this as a journaling card. I really considered using this one. I thought it would be great on this layout. So if you use the same papers as me, this one would be great if you don't need a journaling card. I just wanted um, to write a little bit of a story about this or put a little journaling because the pictures don't really tell the story so well. So I did a journaling card. This is from my stash. That's one of the few things tonight that isn't part of it. Now, also, if you tuned into me before, you know I love me some dimensional adhesive. So I'm gonna bust that out, I think, right now. Um, I've just got glue dots, pop-up dots, but you can also use a foam adhesive and you can make them flat if you want to as well. Since I'm doing three across, I'm going to start with my middle photo, or I should say that too. If you don't have much journaling and you've got multiple photos, you can also put a photo right in the center too. So I'm just gonna do my dimensional adhesive and because this is my centerpiece, I am going to center it as best as I can and just stick it right there. All right. I'm gonna do the same thing for both my photos. If you have one photo um, that's more of a focal point than your other ones, if you're telling a, a story and with your photos and one of them is, is more, I guess, focal point, um, you can always pop up that center photo and not do the ones on either side. Since these are all sort of telling the same story, I'm going to pop them all up. Okay, one of the other things I like to do if I'm building a layout this way and haven't really done any embellishments or anything yet, and I'm not really sure what I'm gonna put where, I like to put my dimensional adhesive just a little bit in from the corners. So if you decide to stick something underneath because you're layering on some embellishments, you have a little bit of room without having to sort of peel that, that photo back or that journaling card back to sort of slide that, that additional thing underneath. And I will see if I can kind of show you an example of that. Okay. Hopefully those are fairly straight. I'm not terribly centered here, but again, Scrapbooking doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to tell your story. And you'll be doing this at home, not through a camera. <laughs> and you'll do a little better than me as well. All right. Next, I think I would like to add my titles. You do one title. I'm going to give you one other option. If you do three photos across, you could stick some journaling down here instead. I am going to be really simple and do ice cream as my title with the thickers that were on the add-on kit this, or the upgrade kit this month. I love these. Truth be told, guys, this is my second set of these. I actually had these um, in my stash. I bought them when they came out, and now these are my second set, and I love them just as much. Um, 
I used up my first set. I love, love, love these. All right, so I'm just going to say ice cream. So I'm going to go, I see, and I happen to know that my only E is pink. So I'm going to just grab some letters and go right above my journaling here. If you, these are nice and sticky. Um, they will stay once you press down on them. You don't need any additional adhesive. So if you watch, you can tell I'm kind of lining them up before I press down and get them where I want them. All right, and then we're gonna go see our I'm going to do another pink, and I need an M yet. And I think we'll go with yellow on that one. All right, and I'm going to just give those a bit of a bend because I feel like it, and I think it adds a little something. So let me get my outside ones placed in my center. So when I have multiple letters, sometimes, and I'm going off the center, I like to center one, get my outside ones, and then get the inside ones pushed down a little bit better to kind of get my layout done. If you're doing them straight, you're gonna do the same thing, just push them up. Another thing your ruler is good for is if you're doing um, straight across, you can drop your ruler down and get a nice idea of what's actually straight. I'm kind of a lazy crafter, so I don't always tend to care about that, um, but I know some people it drives crazy. So use your ruler to help you get things straight if you're not a lazy crafter like me and that kind of thing drives you nuts. Now, this is where we might use the buttons. You can see I've got a little embellishment bit here, but don't let that when you're using a, uh, using a sketch go, oh, this is the only place I can stick a sticker or an embellishment. Once you start getting the base pieces down, go, mm, I feel like it needs something over here or I want something over there. Um, don't let the sketch make you afraid to go out, branch out, make it your own. Okay, so here's the idea I had, and we're going to see if it works. But there is, on the sheet of stickers that comes in the base kit, so this isn't um, a special upgrade or anything, there is this ice cream cone sticker. And I thought it might be cute if I can make it work. I think I'm going to have to pop this up on dimensional adhesive since I've got this on dimensional adhesive. I am going to see if I can actually build out that ice cream cone with buttons. So it's a thought I had. I didn't try it ahead of time. So you're going to see the trial and error process right here on screen. Sometimes these things work, sometimes they don't. I want to make sure that the buttons aren't covering my kiddo. So I'm going to get it down a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna press that down. If you're doing a sticker like that and you're using dimensional adhesive, um, they, they'll be sticky on the back side and sometimes they'll stick to the paper where your dimensional adhesive isn't, if that makes sense. So if you stick it to your pants a couple of times and pull it back off, all that fuzz from your pants will stick to the back of the sticker and make it not sticky anymore. They make um, things to make your stickers not sticky. Um, there are tools for it, but just, just touch it to your pants a few times and it won't stick to your paper then then put your dimensional adhesive on it, then put it on your layout. All right, I'm gonna try these buttons and we will see how they look. We're gonna have to start with a big one for sure. These are from the upgrade kit again. We're gonna definitely have to start with a big one and I think, I thought there were sizes in here, but maybe not, no, there weren't, okay. I was thinking if you're gonna do buttons as ice cream scoops, you definitely have to do at least three, right? Let's see. I know, right? Am I making everyone hungry for ice cream now? Fun fact about this photo, we went for rolled ice cream. We were It was the only place that was open. We were looking for just some place to go for ice cream after we had a little vacation. We were swimming, and then we went to this bridge we always go to when we go um, to Omaha for a little weekend trip, and <laughs> we had to try the rolled ice cream then. They were the only place that was open, and we're so glad we did. All right, I think, I can't decide. What do you guys like? Do we do go with one, two, or three buttons for my ice cream cone? 
if my comments are slow, let's see. Well, I'll start with the bottom one and I'll see if anyone has thoughts in addition to that. I will, so the reason I pulled out these, um, ad this adhesive is just, it works really well for buttons um, and embellishments like that, if I can get it off the roller. So, but I may, because I've got some dimensional adhesive, I may have to pop it up on that, but I think that will work quite well. All right, okay, I see a three there, so that's the one I'm seeing. I'm gonna go with three then. Mm, I like that red on top. Ooh, bump my camera, sorry guys, make you seasick. All right. Two, and I'm gonna kind of just overlap them a little bit so they don't look like they're just floating out in space. So you can see my my um, lighter color blue one overlaps my darker color blue one a little bit. And now I will probably overlap this one underneath again, I think. So if you stack them right on top of each other, they might look like they're just kind of floating. So this way they're grounded just a little bit. And that was the embellishment idea I had with the buttons and I think it turned out all right. So you see how ideas sometimes work, sometimes they don't, sometimes you get done with them and you love them, sometimes you go, eh, it's all right. Um, so try things, try new things, they won't always be your favorite, but you will always love the story you got to tell afterwards. All right, I feel like this is a little bit bare, so I am officially done using my sketch to build it out, but I feel like it just needs a little something yet, so I think what I'm going to try is to pull a few more just stickers off of here. I think I might need something up in this corner or maybe down below, but I think I'm gonna use this little I Love Summer banner. And, oh, I might kinda like that. See so you guys, this is true life right here. This is how I build a layout. Okay, I think I'm gonna put it underneath. And, I will see, that might be just about it then. Grounds my title a little bit there. And I think I'm gonna stop there. I'm notorious for um, thinking I need more and more stuff on there and then having to pull a few things back afterwards. I don't know if anyone else <laughs> is like that. All right, any questions while I'm taking one last look at this? I will remind you that you can watch this whole video again when we're done. It'll get posted again. You got to give it a minute or two. So if you came in partway through or you just want to look at it again um, and feel like you want to just sit down and build it more slowly where you can pause it and that kind of thing, you can, sit, you'll be able to watch this again on the scrapbooking store Facebook page that you're on right now. Um, if you liked this and like seeing stuff, you can also follow me at Taylor Stamped on Facebook. And you can get this sketch if you haven't already. I believe they were going to link it here in the comments. I think it's in there already. I think they did that. Um, and then you can get that anytime out of that link as well. And I think that's just about everything. Make sure you're following scrapbook, um, scrapbookingstore.com on Facebook and Instagram. And they have a blog so you don't miss any of the great ideas that um, the other design team ladies come up with these kits. There are so many different styles um, across the design team. So it's, it's really nice to be inspired by other people. I think that's everything. I hope this made you hungry and inspired you a little bit. And I would love to see it if you use this layout. Um, whether you, or the sketch, if you use it to do something almost exactly like this. Or if you use your own take on this. I would love to see it. Please, please share it in our um, on the scrapbooking store page under this video or if you're part of the um, creative group as well for the kit subscribers. I would love to see it there. So please, please share if you use it. And I hope everyone has a great evening.